empty egg carton. You don't have any eggs. No eggs. No eggs. Empty egg carton. You don't have any eggs. For women who want kids, the sooner the better. 90% of eggs gone by age 30. No eggs. By the time a woman hits 30, nearly all of her ovarian eggs are gone for good, according to a new study that says women who put off childbearing for too long could have difficulty ever conceiving. The study found that women have lost 90% of their eggs by the time they're 30 years old and only have about 3% remaining by the time they are 40. Make sure you do not overcook it. Now. It's common knowledge that women have more difficulty conceiving as they age, but this is the very first study believed to quantify the number of eggs lost, and it shows that the decline is more rapid than previously believed. Scrambled eggs. In Britain, the percentage of childless women has doubled in a generation, and for the first time, more than half. 54% of American women aged 25 to 29 are childless, as are nearly a third, 31% of women aged 30 to 34. Hey yo, egg check. No eggs. America's in an egg shortage crisis you may not even have known about. If only you knew how bad things really are. 1,200 childless American women aged 25 to 45 were asked why they were delaying childbirth. They were allowed to pick more than one answer. What was the top answer? I want to focus on my career. No. A more popular answer than that was, quote, I want to have life experience. And almost as popular as the career answer was the answer that they, quote, value freedom and don't want to be tied down. There's a party in my pussy. Something great is going on. Big doubt. Sex and the City writer Candace Bushnell, 60, admits she regrets choosing a career over having children as she is now truly alone. Freedom! What happens when you socially engineer women to get out of the home and into the boardroom? To get out of nurturing children and into chasing pointless college degrees? To get out of stable, monogamous relationships and into the toxic hellscape of hypergamous dating and extracting beta books from simps on social media? What happens? No eggs. No Empty egg carton. You don't have any eggs. No eggs. Empty egg carton. You don't have any eggs. The hypersexualization of our abortion on demand culture is brainwashing girls to swap life affirming monogamy for rampant promiscuity. The number of STDs in America has reached a record high, with 2.4 million reported cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis in 2018. In David Cronenberg's 1975 movie, Shivers, a mad scientist creates a parasite that makes the residents of a high-rise residential tower act like sex-craved carnal animals. The motive of the scientist was to use a combination of aphrodisiac and venereal disease to turn the world into one huge mindless orgy. And in our world, the entertainment industry is that parasite. Our culture is that one huge mindless orgy. I'm munching on red pills all day. Have you ever noticed how these same entertainment and media corporations that harp on about respecting women and opposing objectification and misogyny. Literally groom underage female celebrities into superstar status, then begin salivating about the prospect of sexualizing them right before they're about to turn 18. Then relentlessly exploit them for the next 20 years by hypersexualizing everything they do for the consumption of teenage girls. What message does that send? What role models do teenage girls have who are Aren't scantily clad hoes working around to canned pop songs written by computer algorithms owned by Sony, UMG, and Warner. Billie Eilish says she may want to show her body and look desirable in a music video after she turns 18. The bad guy singer said in a new interview that she wanted the option to show her body when she turned 18. An about face from her previous statement saying she purposefully wore baggy and oversized clothes to hide her body from would-be body shamers. Gee, I wonder what male corporate executive at the biggest music company in the world convinced her to do that. Have you ever noticed how corporations relentlessly virtue signal about how much they respect women, about how it's imperative to get more women in the boardroom, and how it's crucial to help women overcome objectification by adopting affirmative action policies that help them obtain powerful positions in society, while simultaneously engineering society 
society and building platforms that encourage the exact opposite. Platforms that incentivize women to behave like thoughts whose only value comes from being objectified by men. <laughs> Back off. What is Instagram? It's a virtual red light district for women to parade themselves lewd and half naked for the approval of thirsty dudes. What is TikTok? It's a platform marketed to teenagers which incentivizes underage girls to act like burlesque dancers in strip clubs for the viewing pleasure of sex crazed teenage boys and literal pedos. <laughs> We're losing our country to find the demographic changes and you want to sit there and watch the girls dance? Wake up America. Which in turn incentivizes the girls watching to mimic that behavior and chase the same dopamine high. Hey yo, egg check! No eggs. Empty egg You don't have any eggs. What is OnlyFans? What is premium Snapchat? Virtual prostitution meat markets where men pay women to sexually degrade themselves. E-prostitution is killing traditional courtship and romance. If women behave like prostitutes online, men are going to treat them like prostitutes in real life. And that's not wife material. The other day this girl was like, hey Sam, you're like a really nice guy and uh, I really like what you do, your videos and stuff, do you want to like... You want to hang out some why so you can steal all my money bitch MGTOW! how many here are actual virgins and is it really making you happy that 56 percent increase in suicide rates amongst 10 to 24 year olds between 2007 and 2017 coinciding with the rise of social media is that not enough? The age of the ethos has socially indoctrinated girls and young women to think that it's normal to be intimate with the entire world. It's not. You're only supposed to be intimate with your relationship partner. You're only supposed to send sexy pics to your boyfriend. You're not supposed to share them with the entirety of Simp Nation. And if you do that, you're not a content creator, you're basically a sex worker. Is it any wonder that doctors are now on TikTok telling 12 year olds to get STD treatments without their parents' knowledge? Why don't you say so? Gross. And before you call me a misogynist, I just did a 15 minute video in which I explain how men are partially to blame for all this. Men who support their girl doing OnlyFans have big dick energy. What? Little bitch, come and give me face. Men who support their girl prostituting herself to other men. Big dick energy? Yeah, you misspelled cuck. Why are you posting the empty egg carton underneath 18 year old girls? Like I like the enthusiasm, but I don't think you get the meme. Because it's a warning. And a prediction. Without intervention, the e-thought is biologically predestined to become eggless. Empty egg cart. Social media and symptom is radicalizing an entire generation of Zoomer girls to eschew traditional monogamous courtship and pursue degenerate hedonism. Ayo, implant check. Stop chasing beta books, stop chasing clout, get off the internet, and find Mr. Eggman. Five dollars a month! How do you have hours of time to watch me? And not five dollars. Maybe give them access to a separate intranet that only contains cooking recipes. That's a joke. Can someone explain what the fuck this means? The E in E-Girl stands for eggless. I will not stop until every female is banned from social media. Don't test me, you stupid thoughts. Disavow. Take the egg pill. We need to save the eggs.
What was that? The media is telling women two massive lies. One, that it's easy to have babies in your late 30s and early 40s. It isn't. No eggs. You don't have any eggs. And two, that polls show childless older women are happier than women who had children. So why not just sleep around for eternity? Bullshit. Of course 40 and 50 year old women are going to tell pollsters that they're happier for not having children. If they were honest, they'd have to concede that they'd made a monumental life mistake that could never be rectified. When you read accounts from women who are being honest about not having kids, they're always hugely regretful. Western women are also being shamed out of having children in the name of preventing climate change. Childless couples are exalted by the media as having done their bit to stop global warming. Feminist author Verena Brunschweiger recently told German women that the only way to prevent ecological collapse was, quote, the renunciation of one's own reproduction. But even if you believe that overpopulation is contributing to climate change, why is that message only being targeted at women in the West? Germany's fertility rate is 1.4 births per women. That's well below the 2.1 replacement rate. German women aren't having babies. Since 1972, Germany hasn't seen a single year where the number of newborns has exceeded the number of deaths. Meanwhile, Africa's child population will reach 1 billion by 2055, making it the largest child population among all continents. No one is telling Africans to stop breeding. That would be racist. You know what else is racist? White women having babies. Who needs YouTube rabbit holes when you have the BBC broadcasting literal white supremacist propaganda? White supremacist propaganda. Must be pretty bad, right? We'll introduce you to a trad wife, a young woman who has chosen to be a traditional wife staying at home. Oh my god! Woke imbeciles. Traditional gender roles that have existed in society, the vast majority of them non-white, since literally the dawn of humankind. Is this white supremacy? First star, first star, first star. The watch. But I guess it's really important to shame white women out of having babies because they're just popping them out all over the place, aren't they? Um, as it turns out, no, no they're not. How do fertility rates compare globally? Let's take a look at the egg chart. Africa has by far the highest fertility in the world, with Niger number one at 7.0 births per women and Somalia number two at 6.2. The top 20 countries on the planet with the highest fertility are all in Africa. The three countries with the highest fertility rate in Europe are France at 1.9, Sweden at 1.78, and Ireland at 1.77. All countries that have accepted large numbers of migrants with high fertility rates from Africa and the Middle East. So despite its relatively high birth rate in European terms, ethnic Swedes will be a minority in all major Swedish cities within a generation. Countries in Europe with significantly lower birth rates include Poland at 1.38 births per woman and Hungary at 1.45. Two countries that have accepted comparatively fewer migrants from Africa and the Middle East. Countries with high fertility rates in South Asia and the Middle East include Pakistan at 3.8, Iraq at 3.8 and Egypt at 3.4. America's fertility rate currently stands at 1.8 births per woman. In 2000 in 2016, the US fertility rate fell to just under 60 births per 1,000 women, the lowest since records began. Fertility rates for white women were down in every US state in 2017, while among black and Hispanic women, fertility rates were up in 12 and 29 states respectively. And while there's a clear causal link between living in a more economically developed and prosperous country and having a lower fertility rate, migrants who emigrate to Western countries still maintain a significantly higher birth rate than the native population. For example, Muslims living in the UK have a birth rate of three babies per woman compared to 1.8 for non-Muslims. <laughs> Uh, hello, based in Red Pill Department. In the next several decades, most babies in the Western world are projected to be born to 30-somethings. Having kids later in life typically leads to having fewer kids. Richard Jackson, president of the Global Aging Institute, told Axios, there's no way the fertility rate is going to go up significantly unless the average age of first childbirth comes back down a bit. 
and that's hard to see. Fact is, native Westerners just aren't having babies. No eggs. Empty You don't have any eggs. Real wages have stagnated in relation to inflation. And a lot of people say inaffordability is the biggest stumbling block. Which is why all Western countries need to adopt Hungary's policy of offering couples substantial loans which are then written off when they have two or three kids. Is that socialism or survival? The cultural industrial complex also seems to think that some pregnancies are better than others. The child free life. Why I have zero regrets about my childless life. Do your part, get sterilized. Meanwhile, a biracial royal baby can finally help fix Britain's complex relationship with race. Transgender man celebrated for having baby using trans woman's sperm. Doctor also trans really makes you think. I fucked every E girl in the whole world I sold a couple bitcoins so I had to splurge I sent an Uber for her even though it had a surge All this traffic in my bedroom, police think I'm selling herb <laughs> While women are being told to behave like men, express dominant traits, seek power, exhibit sexual promiscuity, society and culture is indoctrinating men to behave more like feminine women. And as a result, the emasculation of men, particularly white men, seems to have triggered a kind of biological rebellion amongst women, to the extent where in order to fill the gap left by men abandoning their traditional gender role, women are overcompensating. Why do you think 62% of young women admit to having rape fantasies, with the actual number who do probably being significantly higher? Why do you think so many women are searching for ultra-violent porn? A quarter of straight porn searches by women offer videos featuring violence against their own sex. Women are consuming much more of the most extreme misogynistic sexual material available online. Why do you think strangulation sex play has become so normalized to the extent where one woman in the UK is accidentally strangled to death by her partner every two weeks? You get back to the hotel and stay there. I like it here. Go on, get moving. I said... I like it here. Well, I can change that in a hurry. Why do you think there are entire forums dedicated to women talking about how they're trying to bait men into raping them for their own sexual gratification? Why do you think in some countries, Fifty Shades of Grey is the best-selling book of all time? Why do you think a lot of young women are very enthusiastic about inviting in male migrants from very traditionally, shall we say, patriarchal countries. You have this crazy alliance between the feminists and the radical Islamists. Is there an attraction that's emerging among the female radicals for that totalitarian male dominance that they've chased out of the West? Are women expressing this biological backlash against social engineering and the emasculation of men by actively pursuing an overcompensating dominant force? even to a dangerous degree. Is this some kind of innate evolutionary self-correcting mechanism? Is this also a rebellion against dominant roles in society being forced upon women, when they're biologically predisposed to want to shy away from adopting those very roles? Men and women won't sort themselves into the same categories if you leave them alone to do it off their own accord. I've already seen that in Scandinavia. It's 20 to so 1 female nurses to male, something like that, it might not be quite that extreme, and approximately the same male engineers to female engineers. And that's a consequence of the free choice of men and women in the societies that have gone farther than any other societies to make gender e equality the purpose of the law. Those are ineradicable differences. You can eradicate them with tremendous social pressure and tyranny, but if you leave men and women to make their own choices, you will not get equal outcome. And of course, when women are constantly bombarded with the expectation of competing with men in the jobs market, the importance of having children drastically subsides. 2004 Census Bureau data showed that nearly half of women with incomes above $100,000 a year 
are childless. In the UK, half of all female FTSE 100 board members are childless. And 43% of all women with a university degree are also childless. Who stole all the eggs? The sexual revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the eggs. No eggs. Empty egg You don't have any eggs. The bottom line is this. If traditional gender roles are reversed, a lot of women are going to stop behaving like biological women they're gonna stop having babies. If male gender roles in society are imposed on women, they're going to abandon the female gender role of childbirth until it's too late. If the culture is based around rampant promiscuity and hypergamy, that destroys the foundation for stable, monogamous, long-lasting, childbearing relationships. If the culture normalizes and rewards women for acting like prostitutes, that destroys the foundation for stable, monogamous, long-lasting, childbearing relationships. If the culture shames women for adopting traditional maternal gender roles, that destroys the foundation for stable, monogamous, long-lasting, childbearing relationships. And whether you think it's by accident or design, over the past 50 years, this has brought about the demographic decline of the West. Our eggs have well and truly been scrambled. Scrambled eggs. It's absolutely crucial for you to help me fight the war on free speech by supporting me via subscribe star, link in description, and also signing up for my free newsletter at summit.news forward slash newsletter.